So for those of you tuning in right now, uh, some changes that are noteworthy in the National Capital Amateur Football Association. Um, the Midget League, obviously last year, made a big change with dropping 19-year-olds at that division. It was felt that the 17-year-olds uh, and the 19-year-olds, just because there's so many changes at that age uh, in terms of being at the end of high school and then maybe exiting high school, getting jobs that you know, those age levels together kind of a mixed bag and it was decided that the 19s would be dropped and there's lots of opportunities for 19 year olds in the city with the junior football Sooners. Um, there's the varsity programs in the summer, but 16 year olds were then added on the bottom end. So that's gonna help boost the roster numbers because typically um, Bantam is a pretty full program in the city. So 16, 17, and 18 year olds are now the official age um, demographic for the uh, Midget League. And uh, the way it's gonna work is the five kind of more typically powerful teams in the Midget League, that being Canada, the Bel Air Norsemen, the Nepean Eagles, the Myers Riders, and the um, Forgive me, um, drawing a blank here, but uh, the two teams that have been added that uh, typically haven't been there, uh, Orleans Bengals have had a team, but they have struggled over the last uh, five, five or six years, probably since the last time they were named the Dukes and Ron Raymond, the head coach there, uh, took that team to, um, to an A-Cup championship, midget championship with obviously everyone in this city is familiar with Jackson Bennett, who was the running back there, um, and uh, won it. But really since that year, which I believe was 2013, uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the uh, comments on the live stream, um, the Bengals have struggled. So they've dropped, well not dropped, but they have changed. What they've done is they've joined the QMFL. So they're going to play their season, a 10-game regular season in the QMFL. They'll be traveling to Montreal to play their games in a very, very uh, stiff competition in Montreal uh, and they'll be playing uh, the typically the um, you know division two teams in the QMFL still great competition and I think it's going to allow what the Bengals were called the Bengals now they have rebranded they've joined this new league and they'll be called officially the Orleans Raftsmen and I got to tell you from a personal opinion um, the branding that they've done the uniforms that they're going to have it looks like a professional football team if I, was a, if I was a player 16, 17, or 18 in Orleans, I would just be ecstatic about what they have going on with the Raftsmen. I think it's gonna be a real pro experience. Ron Raymond always delivers a pro experience. He expects a lot out of his players in terms of watching film. But I mean, if you're looking for a CIS or NCAA experience, you're gonna get it with the Orleans Raftsmen this season with the travel and the competition. The other team that's going to compete in the QMFL with the Raftsmen are going to be the Gatineau Vikings. Now, this is especially uh, interesting because the Gatineau Vikings have always wanted to have a Bantam and uh, Midget team, but just because of the high schools that are out there and the amount of um, competition of, uh, uh, over players and where they can play, there are just so many options that it's hard for any team in that area to put together a really strong competitor when you're competing against some of the stronger, um, more populated areas in Ottawa. But what they have done is they have joined the QMFL with the Rasmen, and that's gonna allow them to get some good games. It's gonna allow the talent in Gatineau, Elmer, and the surrounding Uduay area um, to develop and, and develop at a level that suits them, um, and they'll be able to compete. Now, the top five teams that I mentioned before, Canada, uh, Bel Air Norsemen, the Nepean Eagles, the Myers Riders, and the North Gloucester Giants. Those are the five. Those teams typically have been stronger in terms of numbers and the uh, coaching has been very strong there. Those, two, those five teams are gonna be playing a, a, a regular season with each other plus 
an interlock schedule with the top five teams from Montreal. So there will be a home and an away game during the regular season with, the, with a Quebec opponent. And then that will go into a playoff. Now, this is where the two connect, and I think this is a really interesting aspect of the new setup.